we begin to enter into our time of meditation. So I invite you now to place your feet gently on the floor, allowing yourself to become rooted to Mother Earth. Allowing the chair or the cushion or the floor you sit on to begin to just support you. Just feeling your body kind of meld into your seat. Beginning to bring our awareness to the breath. Allowing it to just gently flow in and gently flow out of the body. Now I invite you to now begin to bring your awareness to your heart center. that heart space where love resides. That space where we look around and we know, we see the Christ consciousness in each and every being on this planet. that place where we hear song in the midst of what could otherwise be sorrow. That place where we feel joy despite the empty streets. that place, that space where we feel gratitude for all of those who have stood up at this time and said yes. Yes to helping our fellow beings as we go through this, this time of journey and transformation. This space where we feel gratitude for ourselves for having said yes. We said yes as being a part of this journey of spiritual evolution as we continue to awaken and to rise to what is next, what it is that is mine to do right now in this amazing, beautiful time of transformation. There is still love. There is still joy. There is still kindness. It's all around flowing from within you and into every being. And I invite you now to just, as we prepare to enter into the silence, to just take that gratitude and just allow yourself to feel it. Feel it for those healthcare workers 
that are saying yes. And for all the people, the people who are delivering our pizzas, the people that are working at our grocery stores, to ourselves for just our willingness to be here during this time. And as we enter into this silence, I invite you to just allow yourself to bask in that gratitude, to bask in knowing that you are here to take this planet into the next phase of this beautiful spiritual evolution as we enter into our period of silence. And as you begin to bring your awareness back to this time and this place, we do so with an awareness. An awareness that in that heart space where all that gratitude and love and peace exists, so does the God within. our divinity, our, deni our divine nature, our connection with all the beauty that is, is all found in, within in this heart space. And as we move on about our day and about our week and about the rest of this spiritual journey, we do so with an openness and we do so with a willingness and we do so forever remembering that we said yes, that we are here as a part of this magnificent transformation. You said yes. And let's take a moment to just breathe in this wonderful moment and we acknowledge it and we allow it to be and so it is. And now I invite you to continue these feelings of joy and these feelings of gratitude as we move into our time of a new life. So I'd like to thank Pete for bringing us this wonderful music today on this Easter Sunday. Martin for running our technology this morning to help make this live stream possible. Mindy Wilkins for acting as my celebration assistant this morning. And I'd like to just thank all of you for being willing to be here with us on our live stream this morning. I would also like to welcome two very special guests that I know are also streaming in with us this morning, my parents. So they are streaming with us live from their home. Yeah, live from their home in Texas this morning, despite the tornadic type of weather that they're having today. So we want to welcome them, them and thank them for tuning in as well. So happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter 2020. It, uh, you know, I don't think I have to tell anybody here that it's not quite probably what we thought we would be doing for Easter Sunday. But, you know, it's what is right now in this moment. And we are going to make the best out of it. We're going to have a great Easter regardless, right? Because we are here in this moment and we're going to celebrate it together. So if anybody has tuned in with my, to my talks before that knows me well at all, knows that I have just random songs pop into my head for the most random of reasons all the time. I can't remember what I was singing this morning at the apartment, but Mindy's like, where in the world did that come from? It was something from the 80s. I don't know what it was, but anyway. 
So there's this, uh, this one song that kind of, when I was writing this talk the other day, that, that came into my mind. And it was a song that I really liked when it first came out. And I still occasionally will still listen to it. But I think it came out around 2008, 2009. And it's a song by a group that you may or may not heard of. They might have been kind of a one-hit type thing. But they were called Seether. And the name of the song, I think it kind of came to me because the name of the song is Rise Above This. And the lyrics that catch my attention the most are in the very beginning of the song because they say, take the light and darken everything around me. Call the clowns and listen closely. I'm lost without you. Call your name every day when I feel so helpless. I've fallen down, but I'll rise above this. And these words, I think they especially speak to me now in light of current events. Some of us may indeed right now feel like we've fallen down, right? Like the, cloud, the clouds have just darkened around us. But today, especially on this day of Easter, we are going to affirm. You know, in fact, I think we are going to yell out that we will rise above this. And as we move into this Easter Sunday, I want to invite you to do something today. I want to invite you for just a moment to just forget about what's going on outside, outside of the walls or where, for wherever you are. Just forget about what's going on out there. Let's forget about COVID-19. Let's forget about lockdowns, quarantines, everything that's going on out there today. Let's just forget about it for just a moment. Just let it be. Let it rest for a moment. Let's instead take this time together this morning to just be. Let's just be with each other even if only virtually right now. Let's allow ourselves to feel those heartfelt connections of our spiritual community that's tuning in together today. And any people we have that's tuning in for the first time today. Let's just allow ourselves to feel those connections. That love and that peace and that joy that comes from those connections. I invite you to just sit back today and to think about the ways in which you can rise today on this Easter Sunday. So and with Easter, I don't think there's probably one of us out there that isn't aware that there was a story behind Easter, right? It's not just some obscure thing that pops up once a year and we're like, hey, we get to go hunt for eggs and dye eggs and all of that kind of stuff. I think we're aware, especially if we've been into a church before, that there is a story behind it. Now traditionally this story is based around Jesus, right? The story tells us that he was crucified and killed by being nailed to a cross, between two thieves, and then placed into a tomb only to rise, also known as the resurrection, three days later. Now, I remember learning at a tra the traditional church that I grew up in that the crucifixion of Jesus was an inevitable event, and that it was one of the main reasons into which Jesus entered into this human experience in the first place. And that was for our salvation, according to the traditional church. To give us salvation or eternal life once we've passed from this human experience. The Gospels in the Bible, I'm referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, also have their own viewpoints of the story. But all pretty much conclude that Jesus was crucified due to a more religious rather than a political crime. Now it was also said that right after Jesus died, that the earth shook and rocks just split open. The guards standing by when this happened were said to have acknowledged it. And they said, according to the Bible, surely he, referring to Jesus, was the Son of God. So I want to take this story and I want to delve a bit deeper. And I want to refer to an Easter talk by our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore. An Easter talk he gave in the year of 1914. Now, Easter is a really big day in our religious and many spiritual communities as well. Today, I realize that we may have some new people tuning in that haven't perhaps attended a Unity Church on Easter. Now, I refer back to the Easter talk of Mr. Fillmore because of his approach to that talk. He mentions both the traditional and more mystical viewpoints when it comes to Easter. For our more traditional counterparts, Easter is a day of hope, glory, and celebration. But Charles Fillmore felt that this viewpoint talks more about what happens after death, after we leave this human experience. He stated that according to the traditional viewpoint, the story tells us 
Jesus was the Son of God, that he was crucified, died, was resurrected, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father as one of the judges of men, and that his death was to save our souls. Then we've got this other standpoint that Charles Fillmore referred to more as a mystical standpoint, one in which also brings about hope, glory, and celebration, but according to Mr. Fillmore, doesn't focus on so much about what happens after death, but more about right now and about how to live. Now, I'm not saying that the traditional view is wrong and that ours is the only right way. I'm not alluding to that at all. I encourage everyone to be with whatever it is that brings you the most comfort and that feels the most right to you. So I want to circle back around to the resurrection of Jesus and those events that happened shortly before, and I want to start with the crucifixion. Now, in the Metaphysical Dictionary, Charles Fillmore describes crucifixion of Jesus as the giving up of the whole personality. So first, it's important to understand that we've, each one of us has this dual thing kind of going on at any given time, all the time, actually. We've got personality, and we've got individuality. Now, it's important to note that many metaphysicians feel that the personality is that which changes. It's this ever-evolving part of us that is subject to change and that does change, maybe from minute to minute, maybe from day to day, even maybe down to the, you know, the tiniest second each and every moment. And it's not really viewing things through a spiritual lens. It's more about viewing the world through that which our physical eyes can see. Simple terms might be who we, are at any, who we even are at any given moment. Maybe take your career, for instance. One day, I personally was a technical writer. Now I'm a minister. Tomorrow, I could be something different. It changes. It cha it's something that changes. Individual individuality is a little bit different, however. It is the spiritual I am of who you really are, and it never changes. It was there before I entered this human experience. It is with me now, and it will remain with me when I make my transition from this experience. Individual, individuality, if I can talk this morning, never ever changes. It is that unlimited spiritual consciousness. And we can call it different things. We've probably even heard to it referred to as different things. The Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness, super consciousness, God consciousness. And right now, though, it's really easy to be living from that place of personality. We turn on the news. We scroll through social media, we talk to people, and we see this, this pandemic that's going on in the outer world. It's this pandemic that's sweeping the entire planet. We may feel worried, we may feel afraid for ourselves, our families, and our friends, even possible future outcomes. You know, what are things going to look like when this is over? Will the world be the same? Will I be okay? Now, the story of Jesus' crucifixion tells us that even Jesus became afraid. He was very much just like you and I when it came to personality and individuality. He also had this same dual thing going on within himself. It is said in the Bible in Mark 15, 34, that Jesus cries out, and this is in Aramaic, Aramaic Eloi, Eloi. Lama sab utu ni, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But despite being afraid, Jesus knew. He knew that he came here destined for something greater than what his physical eyes could see. And he knew that on the other side of that fear, he was going to transform, he was going to grow, and he was going to rise into something different and something new. And he knew at that time that we could too. Now it's obviously highly unlikely that any of us, quite thankfully, are ever going to experience a physical, physical crucifixion. But it doesn't mean that we won't undergo our very own spiritual crucifixion. And it certainly doesn't mean that we're not going to feel fear or feel a little afraid when this happens. It's moving into something different. It's moving into perhaps something unknown. Oftentimes, living within this duality 
we can begin to cling to what's familiar, right? We all have a tendency to do that. It feels good. We may know it. And although we may also know that it may not be the best thing for us, we cling to it nonetheless because it's what we know. Jesus' life up to that point, I would imagine, had come definitely with its trials and tribulations, but those were all still familiar even to Jesus. However, the time had come for him to move into something different, a new way of being. The Bible foretold that this was the destiny of Jesus, and I believe it's ours too. I believe it is also our time to choose to rise up. To move from living within just the mindset of the personality into the one that's based more within individuality. The place of our Christ or our divine consciousness within. Now, one of the ways in which I personally feel we're being called to do more is to stop seeing ourselves as being separate from one another. Jesus even mentioned this in Matthew 25, 40, when he said, and the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. And my gosh, what a perfect time to practice this. This COVID stuff isn't just happening here in the United States. It's happening on a global level. There's not one life that's not being touched by this in one capacity or the other. What a wonderful opportunity we have right now to reach beyond and to look into the eyes of people everywhere and to not just see you or me, but to see us. To say to them, you know, I know what you're going through. I know the pain you feel. I'm grateful to have you here by my side to ride this out together. It's looking at a much larger picture. That oneness. Something that we most definitely, something that most definitely never changes. Maybe it's also seeing things differently than we ever have before. Many times we view the world through the lens of our conditioning, right? All the way back from childhood, probably in most instances. Perhaps we were taught or told that life's not fair. That others aren't ever to be fully trusted. That we work hard only to eventually be fired or to be laid off. Whatever it is or was, we take a look at our lives and realize that we believe these things. Even if only on a subconscious level. And we find we have believed them due to our conditioning. It's what someone before us believed, and perhaps it's been passed down from generation to generation. And it becomes so because we believe it to be true, whether it really is or not. And I've said this in talks before, but maybe it's believing you're not good enough or worthy enough, nice enough, good-looking enough. It could be any number of things. Maybe it's believing that the world and everything in it is bad. And even looking at this coronavirus stuff and thinking that our future is doomed and that the world will never be the same and not in a good way. What if someone were to tell you, though, that maybe our conditioning isn't always true or necessarily the only way? What if someone were to ask you to stop for a moment and to really think about whether or not that conditioning is actually true or only true because someone else said it was, perhaps from their own experiences. Now, I remember looking at Facebook recently, and one of my friends posted something about those chain messages that, are, that have always gone around on Facebook and are more so now, I've noticed, because people are bored at home. But, <laughs> but they're being passed around. And those that say something like, you know, Life is beautiful, pass it on. Or, you know, happy Easter, pass it on, you know, because they want to keep it going. But my friend said something to the effect was, I can say right now, if you send me one of those things that says pass it on, it's going to end with me (laughs) because I'm not passing it on. And this could be said for anything, including those things that we've just kind of taken at face value to be true because someone else said it was. Why can't some of those untruths, just like some of those Facebook chain letters, end with me? Why, don't, why do we have to continue to 
pass down this perpetual cycle of believing truths about ourselves and others simply because someone at some point decided it was true about themselves and about others. We can break those cycles. We can break those chain letters today if, if you will, if you want to, if you desire to, right here and right now. We just have to believe. We have to know and we have to believe that we know that we are something greater. We have to make the decision to stand up and say enough and make the decision to rise. Martin, you can go ahead. a new reality, a 
ideal way to connect with each other heart to heart. Purity. Oneness with all of creation. Curiosity. The kingdom of God. A culture of peace. Spiritual harmony. Expanding consciousness. Greater expression of who we've come here to be. Higher awareness of our interconnectedness. Divine potential. Our authentic selves. I rise up to magnificence. Magnificence! The birth of a new humanity. I am rising into possibility. Possibility. We are rising up to the transmutation of the old and the transformation of the new. Courage. Self-empowerment. Rise up. As God, the joy of community, the joy. So I ask you today, what are you going to rise up to? You just had a video, an entire video of all unity ministers talking about rising up, choosing to rise up. They've given you permission to rise up. I've given you permission to rise up. The universe has given you permission to rise up. The question is, are you going to give yourself permission to rise up? Today I can tell you that I make the, the decision to rise it certainly doesn't mean that there aren't going to be times where we won't experience fear. It's going to come. But Jesus taught us that it's okay. He taught us that it's okay to feel that fear as we move toward this amazing rebirth. A rebirth of moving into this new phase and this new way to live. We don't have to stay with what's comfortable. In fact, we can't. We can't stay with what's comfortable if we want to expand if we want to move and to evolve into something new and beautiful. This stuff happening now on the outside, it can look pretty bad. It can instill fear because it's not comfortable, and it is sure as heck unknown. But you know what? It does not have to stay that way, because together we can choose to rise, and we can do it together. Happy Easter, my friends, and namaste. Okay, and now, seems kind of anticlimactic to go from the message all of a sudden into now, but I was just going to really quick just give some, uh, some announcements, some Unity Weekend updates really quick before, I, um, before we move into our offertory period. Now, of course, we've got our uh, 10 a.m. Sunday service that will continue to live stream until further notice. And we have our Food for Spiritual Thought class, which is after this service at 11.45 on Zoom. And we are currently studying Divine Audacity, so I hope you will join me with that. We have our midweek prayer circle with uh, Josie Collins on Wednesdays at noon. That's on Zoom as well. We've got our virtual lunch on Thursdays at noon. And that is just kind of where, it's just kind of a... We don't really have an agenda. We just kind of get together and talk a little bit about things that might be things that we've learned during this time, new skills that we've learned, or even just to kind of get some things off of our chest, just to kind of do that with our spiritual community. And we've got now the Friday group. is It's called uh, Fellowship, and it's a drop-in group, and it's now also streaming via Zoom. It meets on Fridays at 10 a.m., and you can contact Diane Gould or Ann Schwartz for an invitation to that on Zoom. We've got now our early morning prayer meditation uh, uh, service, Sundays, 8.30 a.m., that's on Zoom. And then Youth Ed is on Zoom as well at 10 a.m. Please email Helen Kenyon at youthed at unityofmadison.org for the invite and the Zoom link and password to that. And, of course, if you have any questions, you can contact the office, or if you need any assistance or need any of these links, we can help you if you just contact the office. Okay, and now I want to move into our offeratory time, and I want to first thank you all for your generous donations that have continued to come in. It's so very important since we've still got, you know, the building to maintain, and we've still got this wonderful staff that's, that's still putting together these Sunday services, and I thank you so much for your generous donations for that. So I, I definitely thank you. I'm very grateful for that from the bottom of my heart. 
So today, while you're preparing your tithes and offerings, I remind you to stay connected during these times via the, the uh, announcements that I just gave or our Facebook page. And to join me each Thursday at noon for that virtual lunch I was, I was talking to you about. We have really made some connections on there, I feel, and kind of gotten to know each other a little bit better. And also remember that Silent Unity is standing by to support you with prayer 24-7. They never leave that post. They're always there. So definitely feel free to connect with them. So I invite you now to please take your tithes and offerings in your hand or hold them over your heart as we say together our offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And now I invite our virtual